Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev. Today we'll be diving into another little project inspired by yet another Game Jam theme. And that theme is No Death States. Now, it seems that this one was a little open to creative interpretation, but we'll be taking it pretty literally. We'll be creating a simple shoot 'em up where death is not the end. In fact, the player can't die at all. Instead, they're quote unquote reborn as something new, which in turn will change the way that the player plays. So that's the plan for today. Create a simple shoot 'em up game, then add a penalty for taking hits that doesn't end in death, and finally have that penalty alter the way that the game is played. Sounds like a plan, so let's get to the coding. First up was the player control. Now, if you've been watching a while, you probably know the deal here. I set up a cooldown check, and if the player is on cooldown, we created a projectile that would move in the direction that the mouse is aiming. Moving on, when a player quote unquote dies, they are brought back with different properties. One of them being the way that their bullets fire. So I added the switch function in and started work on the second form. This form would fire projectiles in a split shot, and so instead of one, two projectiles are spawned with mirrored directions. The result is an angled split shot, which is a pretty... Actually, it's very different from a singular controlled shot. And once again, things are going pretty smoothly, so I moved on to our final form. Admittedly, I went into this project with only a rough idea of what I wanted to do, so most of this was improvised. So the third form ended up being a quote-unquote piercing shot sort of concept. Instead of a singular projectile, two projectiles would spawn instead, increasing the player's chance to hit something. While I wanted three radically different forms, I wasn't looking to create anything too complicated for what was meant to be a simple project. But with all that working, I gave each form its own cooldown times. Then I had the player's sprite change shape depending on which form is currently being used. And finally, I also applied similar code to the projectile to mirror the player's current form. More will probably be done with this in the future, but for now, that's all we needed. So, uh, things were going pretty well up until now, but because I wanted to allow the player to fire in both directions, I soon realized that the form that created the split shot had some problems. In its current state, the code only allows the player to fire to the right and not the left. Admittedly, I've never bothered to figure out how to do this with math, so I spent a good 15 minutes trying, uh, but getting nowhere. So instead, I set up a temp variable based on the player's image x scale, which depends on the mouse's position relative to the player. The variable would provide the code with the proper direction needed to allow the player to fire left and right. Now that the player code was pretty much finished, we could now work on the enemies. The enemies would behave similarly to the players in that they had a cooldown, and depending on their type, they would produce their own unique projectiles. The first type, much like the player, is a basic single projectile fired in the direction of the player and it worked and looked just as you'd expect it would. Before I continued on, I wanted to get down the animation for our enemies. When waiting on cooldowns, they'd use an idle animation, but when firing projectiles, I wanted them to switch to their attack animation. I couldn't get this to work right based on the cooldown timing, so I had to resort to creating a state system, including a state timer, just for the animation. When the enemy attacks, it switches its visual state to the attack animation just long enough to mirror the action, before snapping back to the idle animation state. Seems a bit overkill, but at least it worked. Going back to types, as I started to work on the second type, I realized that I was overthinking things a bit. I didn't need the enemy to determine a projectile's behavior, I just had to tell the projectile what type it was, based off its creator, and have the projectile go do the rest. So that's what I did. I wanted to create a somewhat chaotic projectile that would change its direction every few frames. And so using a state system and state timer allowed me to make a somewhat zigzag-like projectile. I toyed with the idea of having them slowly turn into their directions, uh, but opted for the instantaneous version instead in the end. And for the final form, I decided to go with a multi-shot projectile. Originally, I had three projectiles spawn, but it seemed like a bit much, so I toned it down to two. It actually worked out better this way because it somewhat mirrors the player's split shot form. And finally, to top off our enemies, I added color to help make their forms more obvious and apply that color to their projectiles as well. And there we had it for our first hour or so of trying to code together a no death state style game.
We've still got a few features to add to make things interesting, including actual contact between players and enemies. But for now, that'll do it for this episode of Let's Dev. So remember that if you like this video or enjoy Let's Dev in general, be sure to hit that like button. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. And as always, be sure to leave your thoughts on our progress in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.